Hey Nathan here, welcome back to another DirectX tutorial. Last tutorial we discussed a timer and the appropriate API calls to get the information we need in order to use seconds for updating our sprites and other gameplay objects instead of every game loop. In this tutorial we are actually going to use that information we gathered from those API calls and to use the seconds we got from our formula in our updating logic for our sprites. So let's open up the header files and let's modify our gameplay object.h file. We have an update and draw virtual function here that accepts a float game time. So that's good. That's already ready to go. Now, let's open up our source files and our gameplay object cpp file. Let's look at the update and draw. Draw is fine, it's not doing anything with game time at the moment, but update. Updating is doing something every loop. It is updating the position based on the velocity every time it loops. So instead, we need to update our position based on the velocity times seconds. That is the correct physics formula that we will be using. In physics, when you update position with using velocity, the velocity is meters per second in physics. So when we're talking about video games, velocity can be pixels per second. Position and in physics real world position is you know meters in video games and position is pixels You're 200 pixels from the left. You're 300 pixels from the top It's a XY pixels where your object is positioned is pixels So to get from pixels per second, which is what velocity is, two pixels, we multiply it by seconds. So in order to get pixels, we have a pixels per second object. Pixels per second. In order to get rid of these seconds here, we need to multiply it by some other value that has a seconds, and then those two cancel out. That leaves us just pixels. So how do we get rid of a pixels per second, which is we multiply it by a value that has seconds, which is the elapsed game time. So now, instead of the velocity being every game loop, the velocity becomes what you want, how far you want the object to travel every second. So this is done. Now let's look at our game.cpp. Game.cpp, when we update, we update based on game time. And the game time is passed to the update function here. So in our run function, we have our float game time is set to zero. So we need to actually get rid of that game time arrow update. Game time arrow elapsed game time. Game time arrow elapsed game time. Now if we press F5, it's successful. Now I'm going to let this go. Look how slow it's running. I'm going to leave this running. I'm going to move it to over here. When we initialize our gameplay object, we need to have float x, y, rotation speed, and maximum speed. So before, this was 1.5 pixels, every game loop was our speed. Now it is 1.5 pixels every second. 
every second. So look how slow they're moving now. So how do you get to where we want it to be relatively close to what we had it before? Most common monitors these days are 60 hertz. Now there's really no way for you to notice a difference after 60 frames per second, after it goes above the amount of hertz the monitor has. Now there are monitors that have 120 hertz, which means 120 FPS would be the maximum that you will really notice a difference. You know, if you look at video games and you look at, oh, I have 700 frames per second, but it does not look anything different than if I had 60 frames per second. That's because your monitor refresh rate, you really don't notice any difference. 60 hertz, it refreshes 60 times a second, so 60 frames per second is the maximum you'll notice a difference. We can have an FPS counter, and we can determine stuff that way if you'd like. But for right now, most commonly it's 60 hertz, so 60 frames per second is what you will, the maximum is what you will notice the difference. So let's say, let's make it 90.0F. 90.0F. And I'll leave the other one the same. Press F5. So that one is running just as fast as it did before. But now it's using seconds instead of every game loop. So your speed is going to have to be really high. Because that's what you want to have. I want to move. I want this object to move 90 pixels per second. Before, we had it set to, I want it to move 1.5 pixels per loop. So now they're both at 90. Now this is what we saw before. Now we can obviously increase that and it'll be faster. 180, it should be twice as fast. We want the object to move 180 pixels every second. which it obviously is twice as fast. So instead of having a, low, a very low speed value, we need to have relatively high speed values because we're using time. Before, we were just using the amount of loops the game has. Now we have time, so we need to increase the amount of speed we need to give the object. So that's how you use time when updating. All right, so let me bring up Notepad here and let's discuss a few things. So, in physics, velocity is equal to meters per second. Position is equal to meters. And you can use, you know, any other measurement you want. Just the most common thing is using meters. In video games, obviously we don't have meters, we have pixels. Velocity is equal to pixels per second. And position is equal to pixels. So in order to get from velocity to position, we need to get rid of the seconds here, and we do that by multiplying velocity times time to get rid of results in just pixels. So I bring this up, if you want to add acceleration to your game, and we'll do this later on, but if you want to go ahead and do it now, 
in physics, acceleration is equal to meters divided by seconds squared. In video games, you can probably guess acceleration is pixels per seconds squared. So the easiest way to get, if you want to add acceleration, the easiest way to get that through is to update velocity is equal to acceleration, or plus equals actually. We need to update velocity, acceleration times time. So acceleration is pixels over time squared, but velocity is pixels over time. So we just need to get one of these t values out, so we just multiply it by seconds, and that gets rid of one of the t's, which results in one of them remaining. So we updated velocity, now we need to update position. So if you want to add acceleration to your game, you want to do this. Acceleration updates velocity, and velocity updates the positioning. Alright, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Next video, let's see what we're doing. Next video, we're going to discuss keyboard input. And we're going to implement the... How I'm going to discuss how to get input from the keyboard using the Windows API. And then after that, we'll build a keyboard class to handle everything. So I hope to see you next time.